I think everything starts off with the house. If you have a house, you have the stability, yes. you have the sense of I, you know, loving and a sense of belonging, and then the rest of the world can, can be fixed. is enough um, with the bathroom and toilet inside with the bath with um, a geyser with the run, a geyser yeah, with, um, with warm water I will say a two bedroom would be the adequate with your kitchen and your and your, uh, your nice yard so your children can play in and that's what, that's what I would say that. it should be an adequate quality house not a house that within the next two months, three months, the roof starts leaking, the wall starts cracking. That's not a decent house. A decent house would be a three bedroom, bedroom. enough space mm -hmm. for the children, and a nice big yard. Yeah. Not too big, but a nice spacious yard where um, you can at least throw some, you know, garden. No, my my house is made of of iron shit, zinc. Um, obviously, it, it cannot be protecting me from any form of weather. If I might have a tornado tomorrow, I'm sure I will see the sky immediately. We have, we have become accustomed to this, this, this lifestyle here, so you have more blankets and, and you have a jacket. And, but, but the most comforting thing of all of this for me is home. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah, as you can feel, the wind is blowing in here, but it's, it's, it's my place here. You know, I can do and feel what I want to do here. You can do nothing if you don't have a place of your own. You just go that daily routine, that daily routine. You've got no excitement in your life. You've got no... You do have a vision, but your vision is there. At least the decent house is... A house whereby you can feel that you are secured. Whereby you know, if you have children, maybe let's say a two-bedroom house with a dining room and a kitchen with water, electricity. You know you're safe in that house. Then you have access in everything. Then that's where your children can grow up. But yeah, my house was now if you're inside the house, you could hear people from outside talking, and it's difficult to study most of the times, and then it's noisy in our streets also. If one can, if one want to come and get inside the house, he can by just pushing the door and come up because it's not that safe. 30 years I've been in the way, or more than 30 years. <laughs> yeah. I feel very bad, sir. I mean, you know, how must I feel? Because everybody needs a house, you know. You don't have a house, you don't have a job. Some people do some, will, will be involved in the informal sector, which is a small thing, you buy something and sell like food. Yeah. Fed cooks, you know, others will sell sheep heads, whatever. You know, whatever a person can do just to earn a living. You see, we've been complaining a lot, more especially about the electricity, <laughs> even the water. We've got so many leaks, according to the tour that they gave us. So they came and fixed the water. After they left, the water is the going to leak again. Even the drains the outside, the pipes, the water storage, they, I think they didn't do the proper connection. The proper, the proper plumbing to make the storage to go. Each and every time this, we will see the storage is boiling on the roads there. Because we're exposed to various bad elements here, such as gangsterism, drug trafficking, shootings, human trafficking, we've got a huge HIV AIDS epidemic. People are dying weekly at the back in, in, in Q block. This is no place for human beings to stay. And this is no place to rear your children. So it's like 
the counselors that they are supposed to give the people their houses, they're going to give their families first. Sometimes we have to sleep with them if you want the house. They got they just tell you that I can make trip for you. If you can just sleep with me, I can give you a house. Because you want the house, nobody's going to see all oh, it's written on your forehead that you oh you've been sleeping with that person before you get that house. We just do it then. So they can take the advantage of us, more especially the women. Yeah, some people like the most people who are unemployed in in South Africa, I don't want to say it in Cape Town, in South Africa it's a black people. Even before, that's the same thing. So I, for one, I don't see this democracy. The apartheid has left a legacy that I'm sure none of my generation would be able to address it. Uh, I think the generation of my kids that would actually address the imbalances of apartheid because the difference between you know uh, whites and and, 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 and and blacks in South Africa it's huge. In, uh, in rural areas, it's worse off than here. So a lot of people are moving from the rural areas to cities. To cities. So they like to come to Cape Town because they think Cape Town is a bigger city and there are many chances that one can survive. So it's that traffic. And that traffic is not only for jobs, it's also for houses. houses. People will come here and then they will put shacks. They are going to organize people that they're going to have the tender to give those people. Those people have to pay to get the tender. The councillors are so very corrupt. They have to pay for the people to vote for them. They have to pay for the people to do whatever. Everything's about money. It's all about money. If you got money, the system works for you. If you don't have money, you must keep your mouth quiet. That's how it is. But uh, if only the government can just work together with the... It's, it's all about politics here in South Africa. If they can just work together, the opposition and the ruling party, hand in hand, I think everything can be easy. And we as commuters, can we, if we can stand up also and do something and don't depend on the government, just try do some, to do something of, on our own so that the government can meet us halfway. For me, the way I see it, um, all of those infrastructures have collapsed already. You know, it, it hasn't formally collapsed. We it's formally... Um, and if you don't have money in this country, then, for instance, in the health, you, you, you'll get maybe less than basic um, 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 mm, okay. health care. But then they claim to have the best constitution in the world. Are they the... The, the, the f number one unequal land in the world. But they wouldn't tell the people that because they took a rut. Some people have given up hope. Mm -hmm. They became contented staying here, but not to me. This is just one big hello, mm -hmm. which I need to, to get out of here. I'm very positive for, for uh, the future because I know the people, they will rise at the right occasion and rise not just in the physical sense, but even the consciousness of people. People are rising, people are beginning to question authority and people are beginning to see, but you know, they cannot believe and trust the politicians any longer. So people are taking initiative. Yeah, if I can just get a job, a proper job, so that I can provide for my family, so that I can give them uh, a better place to, to stay. I can uh, educate, so that my children can go further. I see myself going forward. So if I can just get a job, I can carry on with my studies, I can, uh, can work, I can do, oh, there's nothing that I cannot do. I can do everything. And so I can be more empowered to fight the struggle and mm -hmm. I hope, like I say, in two years' time, I want to have my own house. Because my children are getting older, and I don't want a life like this for them. I would like to study further, but I can't because I have to support my family also. 
maybe if I finish my degree, my mother will stop working, then I must work for my family. Yeah. Especially in our communities, there is a lack of information. So, yeah, I just would like to find some resources and ways to get myself educated in that way and equipped to be able to assist my community in whichever way necessary. One would love to, to get a decent job, a decent house, an environment where kids would be able to play free. Um, those, I mean, and conditions where we would all be equal. Those are the basic, most fundamental changes that I would love to see in my life. But my first thing is still a house, which I can call home. It's a small stop, and to a lot of people, it doesn't look like it's going to make a difference. You know, starting an organization with a few hundred people, and it's like, what are you going to do? change it. But what they don't know is that a few hundred or the ten people that stands up and another ten people and another ten people would make a huge noise. Yes.